strong partial differential equations. And uh, I just to warn you, we are, we are taped. So if you feel uncomfortable to be struck either by one of these cameras or uh, the GoPro, there's also a GoPro camera which I want to compare the, the technology, uh, then you just move out of, the, out of these uh, 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 sectors. But uh, it's an exciting topic. I think it's one of the most exciting topics in mathematics, partial differential equations. And uh, we have already seen the definition of the, what the partial differential equation is. It's, a, it's an equation for an unknown, an unknown function. And we, uh, uh, it relates partial derivatives. So it, it relates derivatives with at least two different variables. And that's a typical multivariable topic. And uh, the exciting thing is that uh, all laws of nature, fundamental laws of nature, we know are partial differential equations. So the equations which govern light, these are the rate equations, it comes from the Maxwell equation, these are uh, partial differential equations. The equations with, uh, with the structure of the universe, the Einstein equations are very complicated, uh, partial differential equations. And uh, today we look at uh, a couple of differential equations so it's not something you have to worry too much about. What you have to be able to do is to recognize these guys and to tell some stories about it, and also to check that some function satisfies a, a, a differential equation. So that's the, that's the goal, and we have some demonstrations here to show that this is really has to do with, uh, with, uh, uh, with real life. <coughs> so uh, we have. I want to kind of cover five partial differential equations today, and you have to be able to recognize them. So what we have is we have a function of what we have is a function of uh, t and x. So that's kind of most of the situations are like that, where t is a time, <coughs> it's a function of two variables. And think about this as time, <coughs> and this is space. <coughs> And so the equations which we are looking at uh, combine a derivative in state of time and a derivative in state of space. <coughs> and so we have to have a partial differential equation, so we can differentiate with respect to t, and we have also to differentiate with respect to the second variable and uh, with respect to x. What would happen if we would only differentiate with respect to one variable and get, a, get, get an equation? What, what, what was this called? A partial differential equation, it is an ordinary differential equation. So ODE stands for ordinary differential equation, PDE, partial differential equations for partial differential equations which have different derivatives. So the simplest, uh, the simplest really system which we can, or this equation which we can set up is, is the, the, what we call the transport equation. Transport equation is uh, the equation when we have the derivative with respect to t. Last time we introduced partial derivatives, that's the partial derivative with respect to t, dx. That's equal to the partial derivative with respect to x of t and x. So that's a beautiful uh, differential equation. It's the simplest, definitely the simplest you can write down, and it relates a time derivative with the space derivative. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things you have to be able to do to check that something satisfies uh, this equation, for example, <clears throat> or maybe can somebody kind of, kind of just pull out, pull out of the hat a solution of this differential equation and you just imagine one. It's difficult to imagine one, but maybe you can see one. What is a solution? Yeah. Uh, f of tx equals zero. Zero, that's a good one. So f equal to zero. Perfectly <coughs> fine solution. It's a very boring solution, right? Because nothing happens. This is this is kind of vacuum, nothing. There's no no action at all. But that's a beautiful that's a beautiful uh, solution. Uh, uh, anything else? <coughs> what, what kind of maybe something a little bit more exciting? One. One. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, sine of x plus t or e to the x plus t. F of t of x is equal to sine of t of x plus t. That's a good one. I like that. 
So that's more interesting. One, who said one? Yeah, but it's also nice. So it's a constant function, uh, uh, which also kind of is, is a, a solution. But sinus x of t, that's kind of a solution which is more interesting. And uh, can you generalize this? You know, see, I mean, is this important that we have a sine function here? Perhaps if you take cosine, is it still a solution? So we take that, let's just check, right? What you have to do to check, you have to take the derivative you state to uh, t. So then we have a cosine is plus t divided by the chain rule times 1 and the f of x. x. So that's uh, also uh, x plus t. And then the derivative with respect to x is also 1, so, so we, really, we really are fine. Actually, it turns out this is essentially the, the only way. Uh, type of solutions. We can take any function here and then x plus t, e, uh, that gives us, the, this gives us the solution. So we have already found some solutions, that's great. But I want to give you also a little bit of insight what actually happens here <coughs> in this, uh, uh, in this uh, uh, differential equation. You have to think about it now a little bit differently in terms of traces. What happens when we take t equal to zero, that's when we have a trace. So let's draw this trace, and actually let's take this solution here uh, with the sign, right? We have the sign function, and uh, so let's just take the sign function here. <coughs> so that's x, so I, I draw here x, and this is f of 0x. So this is a function of two variables, there's a graph, and we are cutting at t equal to 0, that's what we have called a trace. And that's what happens at t equal to zero, right? That's at, at t equal to zero, beginning of time, right, we have that. And now we want to see, we want to look into the future and see what happens at t equal to one, for example. <coughs> so let's, let's see. So uh, uh, what happens here is that this law tells us the rate of change in time of the function value and relates it with the rate of change of x. So let's take, for example, this point x here and let's look at the function value. That's f of 0 of x. And let's look what happens in the future or try to find out what happens in the future. What is, the, what is the interpretation of f of x of t of x at this point? So if you look at this here, is it positive or is it negative? If you look at f of x, you take the partial derivative with respect to x, you look at the rate of change with respect to x at this point, is it positive or is it negative? It's negative because the slope is negative. So that's a slope, right? It's negative slope. So what, we, what this law tells us that this function now, this function value changes <coughs> in time. So does it go up or does it go down? At this point here. Down, right? Because f of t is negative, that means it decreases. So this function here uh, will, at that point, it will go down. <coughs> What happens here at this point, for, uh, uh, let's say if you are here, what happens here? It goes up because the slope is positive, so it goes up and goes up. So it's a little bit, you know, like if you take a, if you take a sheet of paper, and uh, so you take that sheet of paper, and then here we have that, and in this case we push down here, and we push up here. You see what happens with that bump here, that bump will actually just translate here. So what happens is this is a signal, so this transport equation is also called uh, uh, advection. There are different names for it, but transport is actually a good name because it just transports the signal. And uh, so the signal is going to the right. So the signal travels not to the right, to the left. <coughs> And that's what happens here when you take, say, sinus x plus 1, right? Sinus x plus 1 is, uh, is, is the graph, the graph has moved to the left. 
So let's just draw that, kind of like take a little movie here. So we have a here we have a t equal to zero, and then a t equal to one. We predict the future here. The future is that this has moved now to the to the left. So this, and then this, you can kind of see the later time even it has moved even more to the left. So this signal just trans transcends to the left. So this wave machine here is actually for the wave equation, but, but, but it's exactly what happens here with the, with, the, uh, uh, with, with the wave equation. Also, there's a transport going on. We can see there's a, there's a relation between the transport equation and the, and, and, and the wave equation. So this is a little movie. <coughs> so the wave, the signal translates to the, to the left. And indeed, <coughs> so what can you Indeed, if G of zero in z, <coughs> let's just make it more variable, is uh, f of zero of x is given, <coughs> then uh, uh, just write it here. <coughs> if G of x is equal to f of zero of x is given, <coughs> then uh, f of t of x is equal to g of t plus x solves <coughs> the transport equation. And we say with that initial condition, <coughs> We get really that initial condition, and when uh, and, and this function satisfies uh, the, the transport equation because if we take the derivative with respect to t, so we take d over in t partially, partial derivative still, so partial derivative d over d x, g of t of x, that's g prime d plus x times 1, and d over dt, g of t of x. It's also g prime t plus x. So you see, that's a boring system, but actually it's quite an interesting system. So I worked with a, with a student one summer just on these transport systems of graphs on, on a Actually, if you look at the, not in one dimension, but in higher dimensions, also the classical thing is very, very interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, so there are already many, many uh, open problems, uh, especially if you look at it also on networks. So transport is already something very uh, interesting. And that's the first, that's the first PD. So what I want you just, I want you to know this PD is essentially by, you know, you have to, you have to recognize it also if you call it differently with other letters in other frameworks. <coughs> or if you see it in a paper. And uh, that's one of the things which is actually quite important if you read the paper and then you see somebody does something and you see, oh wow, that's actually just the transport equation, or oh, that's a that's a heat equation, or uh, <coughs> so if you can recognize things <coughs> and place it somewhere in the landscape of knowledge, that's already a very important for getting started with some with some research. <coughs> so that's the first that was the first uh, PDE, and uh, maybe there are some questions so far. We are moving on to the next one, which is the uh, heat equation. <coughs> Actually, I might actually put some of these things on, uh, on, on YouTube, but I will check with you. I will put it first on a private say, setting, and then I will ask you whether it's okay to put that there. Yeah. Then, you are, then you are on YouTube. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, uh, that was the first one. Transport equation, simple. Very exciting is the heat equation. Actually, heat. Uh, is, is, is here involved in this lava lamp. It has been knocked over, so it actually kind of has, has to recover first from, from the thing. But it's, 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 it's a very interesting thing. The heat diffusion is a very 
interesting process. And just let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this uh, uh, heat equation. <clears throat> I think it's one of the most important systems at overall in mathematics. It has been used for for amazing things, for proving the hardest problems in mathematics, uh, also in topology and so on. So uh, let me just uh, define the system. So the second thing is the heat. Heat equation. <coughs> heat equation. So what it, it it's almost a transform equation, but it looks like that. So we have f of t of t of x, but we take the second derivative with respect to x, t of x. So that's the second second one. <coughs> but it's very similar, but we have the, the second derivative which has a completely different behavior now than the transport equation. And again, I want you just also to have a little feel what that actually does. Why does it behave like this? And uh, <coughs> so it's actually quite a, also quite, it looks like quite a boring system because what it does, it, it diffuses the heat. So f of t of x is the heat at time t at position x. So, for example, if I would take here, uh, if I would take here this, uh, this room and I would heat it up, like putting it up at lamp and heat, heating it up, and then what happens is I have a temperature distribution which is kind of here, so it's going to be hotter here, and that function is what we, what we, what we, what we study. So, we have that. <coughs> it's too small. So what we have is maybe something like that. This is a f of t of x, and that's x, and so that's the heat at position x at time t. <coughs> So now what happens here? So let's just see what, what happens. I mean, you kind of can imagine this is a hot place. And so what happens with that hot place, that hot place will kind of, this heat will spread. And so this heat equation is also called diffusion equation. So this will diffuse, diffuse heat diffuses. And uh, let's just see whether we can understand this geometrically if we have this uh, Function. So what happens when this is a t equal to zero? We have that heat distribution like this. Maybe something like that. That's a t equal to zero. So let's just again make a movie. F of t of x. This is x. And now we, we, we do the same thing than before. And we also practice it afterwards in a, in a worksheet. So what happens at this point here? We are interested. What happens in the future at this point? Shortly after, maybe a t equal to one. What happens? Can somebody just tell me? Maybe it's steep, maybe, but see what happens. What happens at this point here? Does the function go up or does the function go down? Yeah. Who thinks it's going down? Can you some majority? See, it's going down. Why is it going down? Yes. It's concave down at that point. Which concave means, down, yeah. The second partial derivative with respect to x is negative, so the partial derivative with respect to time is also negative. Exactly. That's kind of a nice kind of insight from calculus that we have f of x of x, and this partial derivative with respect to x, that's the second derivative if you just look at this as a function of one variable. <coughs> so measures uh, concavity. So if it is concave down, that's what happens here. It's concave down. So if it's concave down, then it also goes down. So this is concave down, so the uh, heat will go down here in time. Okay. You can kind of imagine here, you would draw the graph, you would have t going here, and that this function now becomes uh, smaller here. At this point, what happens here, this is a cool place. Uh, this is a cool place. What happens here with the goes up? So 
that's it. So, so you can imagine what that happens, right? It kind of makes things more equal. And so kind of if you, if you wanted to predict what happens at t equal to 1, right? if, you, if you wanted to draw the graph here at t equal to 1, we see that actually just here it has gone down. So the graph is maybe a little bit smaller here. And then here it has gone up. And, and the function is kind of much, much flat. So this, uh, this, uh, this diffusion equation has a, has a smoothing effect.
So it's maybe up to you. It's a little bit of a creative task. We don't ask you ever to do that, but except in hope work where you have a lot of time, creativity needs time. But uh, maybe so you can imagine a solution here which works. What works? Very good, I think that works. e to the power t plus x. Actually, your previous solution one would also work. <laughs> Anything else? Cosine of t plus x? Yes. Awesome. <coughs> so it's like the transport. Right? And actually, if you look at the transport equation, actually you can take any of the transport equation and it actually works. It works so you can see. But there is a kind of a little, I mean that's all that's that's great. Can you kind of modify that a little bit and get another solution? Uh, so let me just write it as x plus t for some. It's the same of course. <laughs> can you write another, can you modify this? and get another solution, which if you have the both solutions, then you have actually a general solution over here. What, what would also work? So in this case, when you take the derivative with respect to x twice, right, you get, so let's just check that, and you have f x x. <coughs> so we take the derivative with respect to x, that gives us minus sinus x plus t, and then we can take the derivative again, so we get minus cosine x plus t, and uh, f t t is also minus cosine x plus t. So, so, so we really, you know, that's what you do in the homework. Also, you check that this works. So you compute both sides, and you see, oh yeah, that's that's the same. Maybe after some simplification. But can you just modify this a little bit? So we have here kind of the trans. We have we have transported into the into the onto the left, right? And uh, maybe I, I should just say we, we try that, that, that little, little toy here. You know, you throw, a, you throw a stone in a pond and you see what happens. So, kind of. so there, is a, there is a transport, right, in, in one direction. And then what could you do? Could you also kind of modify this? What would you take? What would you take? Yeah, we'll you yeah, sine, sine that would also work. Sinus of uh, you can replace this also with sinus x plus b that works too. And any function, right? You can take any any function instead of sine. But what could you uh, take? I, I want to see something a little bit different. Yeah. You can also take functions of x minus t. Minus t, minus that's what I want to do. And if the, the plus t is kind of when you go on this side, right? The minus t is when you go on the other side. So that's actually pretty, that's so cosine x minus t works too. And maybe we can combine that and uh, what we have here, so we can take maybe here, take the sinus of it. So we can take a different function here and they all satisfy the, 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 the way. Now what happens if you have different solutions, you can also add them up. So if two solutions, two functions satisfy the wave equation, that's also before, <coughs> also the sum <coughs> satisfies the a fundamental principle of all linear systems, and these are all linear systems uh, that we can do that. For example, the sum of cosine x plus t and sinus x minus t satisfies also the, the wave equation. And actually what happens is that that's, that's a, a, a result of D'Alembert, French mathematician. I'll show you some uh, Pictures done on there. It's done on there, right? T. Is it T? T? Oh, yeah. oh man. So, done on there. Uh, it's 
So he has actually kind of found the general solution. So we have f of t of x is equal to. So we can take any function of t plus a t plus x. <coughs> actually, let me just write it as x plus t <coughs> plus another function of x minus t satisfies the wave equation. I think you do something like this in the homework, but, uh, but you see when you look at this, when you take the derivative respect to t, you, get, you pick up the minus sign by the chain rule, but if you do the derivative respect to t twice, that minus sign gets, gets cancelled. <coughs> so that's actually pretty cool. We can really write down uh, general and also fit it with the initial conditions and uh, one dimension, also the wave equation, can be completely understood with a general solution, writing down a general solution. And in higher dimensions, that's, that's much harder. And actually, you have to take a PDE course to take this, uh, to learn this. I can really highly recommend you take a course which does some PDEs. Uh, couple of the glide mass. Uh, there's also one here which is more theoretical in the math department. Uh, it's really a very, very, very useful thing, <coughs> especially if you learn quantum mechanics and uh, some more theoretical physics. So let me just give you a little bit of intuition, the intuition behind that. <coughs> so what we have is if you have this Think about this as a violin string, right? <coughs> this is a violin string. And uh, string. <coughs> and what happens is now that the, 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 the wave equation tells us that the second derivative is fx. Now the second derivative in mechanics, what does the second derivative tell you in mechanics? What is that? It's, here it's a concavity, yeah, that's, that, that relates it with concavity. Again, like before, that's in the x. But what happens in t? Like you have seen that when we looked at the derivatives of a, say, a curve, and we took the first derivative, that was the velocity, and the second derivative was the acceleration. Now, uh, acceleration in the Newton has related acceleration with something, in the physics, with force. So that's actually, that's acceleration. By Newton, that's force. So what happens is this bending of the string produces a force. And you can see that, right? If I take something, it doesn't have to be a string. You can also, if I take that, there's a force here pulling that thing down again. So that's, a, that's what we have here. So uh, in this case, there's a force going down, and here's a force going up, concave up means pushing up, concave down means pushing down, and uh, so what happens is this string will be pulled down here, and then, so what happens, this is a, if this is a t equal to zero, you can kind of make a movie, what happens here at, t, at a later time t, this has maybe gone down here, maybe it is doing something like that, but it also can kind of combine things. It's much more interesting. And uh, so, so maybe it does something like this. <coughs> maybe it does something like this and then just goes up here and then down here and up here. That could be a possible, this is a possible, a possible uh, 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 outcome. One of the difficulties is here that we have not only the initial position, which matters, but also the initial velocity. So we have also, also uh, initial velocity. That's ft, uh, uh, 0x, which matters. And uh, for example, if you have a piano and you hit the piano string, then the, 
the position is at zero of the screen, but you hit it with a positive velocity, and if you take a if you take a guitar and you pull it, then you have a change the initial position. So there's both position and and uh, and, and velocity which matters, uh, and, and and that's a little bit more complicated. And I want to make a little bit advertisement for course 21B uh, in the spring, where uh, uh, you learn <coughs> how to solve this, how to solve this uh, uh, this wave equation, <coughs> and uh, it's it's done using Fourier Fourier theory. I mean, even the sum of Fourier or PV or PV solved easily with Fourier, so that's. It's very easy to solve using this uh, 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 machinery of Fourier theory. But let's just make an experiment here. So this is a uh, I got that from the from the red room down. This is a wave machine, and you can play with this. So there are all kinds of experiments you can do. So for example, you can you can give this an initial initial velocity here, like a kick here, and then see what happens. And you see this these waves travel forth and back, so it's like water waves. And this system really satisfies the, satisfies the wave equation. And you can do all kinds of things. They showed me all kinds of things you can do, like holding down here, kind of. And uh, what, what actually matters then is that is the, the boundary conditions also play, a, play an important role in that, in that, uh, in that, in that theory. Right. Does anybody take physics where waves uh, are better? And so in, in, that, in, in such a course, you learn more about this. Uh, about this, uh, the all kind of things. You can also put some damping, I think. You can put some damping here. So that's kind of holding it fixed. And if you if you fix it with that, you actually and uh, you, you do some damping. So there's this damping here has also then a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it has a different it has a, it actually just you know dies out and the wave dies out at the end. So so these boundary conditions may be called. Now you, this is this is a whole this field of, of partial differential equation is huge and uh, uh, it's uh, it, it's a big part of also applied math or pure math. So my wife was a an applied mathematician, and she, she did a lot of such, such uh, computations <coughs> with, with a supercomputer, exploding supernova, and uh, uh, so the, the, the partial differential equations become more complicated. But the numerical computations can be very heavy, especially in three dimensions. Here, this is one dimension, so we have only one variable, only one space variable. In two dimensions, it becomes already more complicated. In three dimensions, already it's in general. Uh, supercomputers and uh, uh, we, uh, have a lot, lots, and lots and lots of applications. So that's what I wanted to say about the the wave equation. We have uh, two more to go. Uh, the next other oh, other questions about the, the wave. Equation. Again, always you just have to know it. You have to recognize the wave equation. Uh, and uh, also, if you write something like uh, <coughs> what equation is that? It's a partial differential equation. Hmm, what is it? Okay, you're not yet ready, right? You have to kind of first absorb it and learn it, but you should recognize what this is in time. For example, in an exam, you should be able to recognize what it is. So we have strange variables. It's not, it's not f, it's a heat equation. Yeah, so the, this is what we have. The x before, that's the function, and kappa is time. So you should be able to recognize these things in completely different setups. Yeah. So if you had an equation that was a solution to multiple of these, like let's say it could satisfy both like a transport equation and a wave equation. So, yeah. Which one would you define it as? Well, I mean, then you are you are just lucky that you have kind of satisfied both. So that's not uh, it's 
from the problem. It would be a problem <coughs> if you make an example you have to match solutions with PDEs and then it doesn't it doesn't work. So that would be a bad example here. That would satisfy both the heat but both the it doesn't satisfy the heat equation but it satisfies the wave equation and satisfies the transport equation. Yeah it's perfectly possible. Actually, the transport and the heat equation are very much created. What you can see is kind of that what is D'Alembert, what D'Alembert realized, right? That you have these, these two things. You have the one wave going to the left, and one wave going to go the right. So you have a transport equation to the left and the transport equation to the right. And uh, so, so there's, a, there's, there's some magic going on, it's splitting this up into a positive time and a negative time. Uh, and uh, you don't have this in you have this time symmetry also. You don't have this in the heat equation because in the heat equation just everything dies out. And so what happens? The heat equation is just one way. Uh, by the way, this lava lamp here illustrates uh, a more complicated PD. It's an Abbe Stokes equation which, which describes the motion of fluids. And you come to this in the Berger case. I want to uh, mention one more before we come to Berger, and then uh, we make a little work sheet, and then I show you some slides. So the next equation is the is the uh, Laplace equation. It kind of looks very much like the wave equation. You can mix it up easily, but it does completely different things. <coughs> That. So that's the Laplace equation, that's number four. So in this case, we, we don't interpret one of the variables as time. So all of the variables are space variables, and what we have is fxx plus fyy is equal to zero. So this is also called the Laplacian of F. And uh, so you see that there's just one side of, if that would be, if that would be time, and you put the negative sign here, you would get the, the wave equation. So but, but this equation does something completely different. So this describes an equilibrium position, <coughs> what one calls harmonic function, very nice harmonic functions, <coughs> harmonic functions, <coughs> and uh, harmonic functions like for example if you take if you take a drum and so I have here a couple of drums here and you just you, you, you might you might bend it on, on, on the on the edges a little bit you might deform it on the on, on the edges but what happens is the inside it actually satisfies the Laplace equation which is very nice. And uh, uh, for example, what would be an, an, an example of a, of a, so what are examples? Maybe again a little bit of a creative uh, task. Creative tasks are always difficult. Can you figure out an example of a function which satisfies the, uh, the Laplace equation? At least not the zero function. The zero function is, is great, but it's 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 not that it, it, it's quite a boring one. Uh, oh, get it. Can you figure out one? You might have just to experiment a little bit. Can we can we dream up a solution? <laughs> Can bring up the solution. One over uh, square root of x squared plus y squared. Very good, very good. <laughs> that's actually, I mean, you have it, that's actually Newton's thing. We actually do that. We should not go into that because you do that in the whole world. Oh, you did it in the whole world, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So that's actually, yeah, great. That's good. <laughs> that's actually Newton. The Newton. I mean, there's a reason why the Newton potential is one over r. And that's the, the, the Laplace equation is, is, is the reason. And, and that insight that you actually have this kind of, you can write 
you know, the fundamental forces as kind of related to, to some Laplace equation. This allows you to do geometry in completely different framework. You can do, you can do uh, uh, geometry in 10 dimensions or on some network. Yep, no? Uh, That's 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 one. So e to the x times the sine of y. Sine of y. Almost. Actually, I think you're right. So let's just check. Let's just check. So what happens when we take? We have x and y, yeah, I should forget. We have now e, x, we have x and y. So what happens when we take f, x, x, f of x and y, every time we take differentiate with respect to x, we get e to the x minus y. So we have differentiated twice. And but that's what we want, right? Oh. So I think that's that's exactly what the uh, cloud had in mind. That's kind of just yeah. I also kind of thought yeah, all that gives us now it doesn't work, right? But it's actually when we have f y y x of y. So what we have is then um, e to the x. That's a constant, right? When we differentiate with respect to x, that's a constant. And then we differentiate with respect to y twice. We get a minus sinus of y. And now, if we add them up, works. Actually, this idea of taking sign is a fundamental uh, idea, and uh, it's uh, it's due to Fourier, who kind of if you, you can take here any. K, right? any any multiple of, of y, sine 2y, for example, would work too. And uh, so Fourier was a, was, was a person who really kind of worked on his heat equation, and he had this idea of using signs, uh, and of combination of signs to actually write down solutions. And uh, this, was a, this was a very creative idea, and he got it while uh, he was on the campaign with the uh, with, uh, Napoleon in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. So somehow in this war, in this complicated area, so also this steered up some new ideas, and it was really a fundamental, a fundamental thing uh, to think about uh, to think about partial differential equations relating with with functions. But we have here a, we have here an example. Uh, maybe more exciting, and that's what, what we come to with this experiment, is if you look at the at, at, at solutions like this, when we have just some constant here, which is a little bit more general than, than, the, than, the, than the Laplace equation. And uh, what happens is, this has relations with these solutions to these equations you can actually see with this experiment. So uh, this is, uh, leads to what one calls the clubbing uh, pictures. And we have here actually the break the break room or the demonstration room has, has provided us with it with some. So what we have is we have a plate and then we can uh, talk about the Laplace, we can actually talk about these solutions of that. And what, what happens when you run that, I just run that uh, so you actually vi let vibrate the, the plane and then uh, for some lambdas, nothing happens. Nothing interesting happens. But if you if you change the frequency up, uh, and uh, there are some frequencies where interesting things happen, where you have solutions of the of the uh, I think it's here kind of where the transition the transition happens to other to other type of solutions. It actually kind of takes everything away, so maybe it's better with a with a ball. Is somebody good in the violin? So I, I tried this in the past and it, it really didn't work. But let me just give it a try. 
see when you actually do that, then it automatically vibrates in the frequencies of the of the plate, and you see actually this uh, this crack. Maybe you can, uh, uh, if, you, if you like, come, come uh, and, and see this uh, closer. Um, and maybe somebody who can play the violin can can uh, can do that better than me. Somebody play some violin? Nobody? Okay, so I have to I have to try as I do. Oh that's a nice one. You actually see this kind of, see this kind of a spiky thing. So what happens is this function has roots, has places where the function is zero. These are traces, and you actually see these traces. Uh, uh, let's just try that again here. You see these traces when you, when you, when you excite it. And, uh, and You can, uh, somebody wants to try maybe, it's better than me. Who dares? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe that one. Let me just put some more power. A salt, I think it's salt, yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, uh, these are the clubbing figures. I have some slides which shows this with some uh, uh, well, some pros have have, have, have done that. And uh, so that's the second last the second last PDE. The last PDE is the is the Burgers equation. That's the most exciting one because I like the beach. And when you are near the beach, then you, you you really kind of see the Burgers equation. I get a, a C out, 
and that C counts as the other value. So that means that the wave goes faster. So C large, the wave moves faster. So what happens now with, uh, with this Burgers equation? So we have a kind of we are the beach. So let me just actually have here the beach. And uh, we are coming here. This is, this is water. And then we have a we have a wave coming. So this is a this is our wave, and we are sitting here uh, 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 on the beach, right? And uh, so this is the sand. And what happens? So this is this is f this is f of zero and x. That's that's the wave at time t equal to zero. Now what happens when we look at this? Evolution. So what happens is because we multiply now with f, and it's not an amplitude which, which, which matters. So if the amplitude gets bigger, so we make with that an amplitude bigger, so that means also the wave becomes faster. So what happens is with a high amplitude, the wave moves faster here than here. Does make sense? And if f is larger here, and the C is larger, so that moves faster. Can you imagine what happens then in time? What does it? Um, the umbrella is in trouble, right? Yeah. So what happens is really that kind of that, that happens like that, and then actually eventually what happens is it will fall over, and uh, the wave will, will break. So that's uh, that's the that's the Burgers equation. That's the last one. And uh, I want you just to practice a little bit what we what we did here in a in a little worksheet here while I set up the the slides. Maybe can you so let me just separate the things you can So uh, so it's a it's a short worksheet where we uh, have to first check that something is a solution. Then we have a. Uh, to predict what happens with the with the solution, and then recognize a, a, a some 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 PDE from a book. And uh, in the meantime, we set up the slides. You can work together also.
Спасибо. Actually, the, 
the Black Scholes equation. So there are lots of interesting equations in nature. 17 equations which change the world, and most of them are actually partly equations. Yes. Uh, it's that argument with uh, and what happens here with this, because this is slope is up, so it goes up. Slope is down, slope is negative, so it goes down. And so, oh, what happened here? What was the PD? Ft is equal to Fx, right? So now if I push here up and here down, uh, the wave goes to the left. It goes to the right if you take some, if you take f t is equal to minus f x, then it will go to the right. That will be the transport into the other side. Instead of the other side, it's like this. Oh, when you take the negative thing, yeah, then, but it's still, you know what happens is, it doesn't matter whether positive or negative, also this goes to the left here. So what happens here, you push down here, you push up here. Right. Push down here on the right. Push. So you always move to the left with this. Could you draw something that would go to the right? Yes, that would be. That would be it, it's, it doesn't. Any function goes to the to the left. Doesn't matter what function it is. Everything goes. To Everything goes to the left. Uh, it's the PDE which tells you whether you go to the left or not. It's not the initial to the cross. But that's good. Oh. It's good in itself. So uh, let's look quickly, just a, a, a couple of slides, just maybe a, a few pictures. This is this beautiful, beautiful, uh, uh, uh. so transport equation we have seen, you should recognize it. And again, this argument tells you whether it goes to the left or the right. In this case, always it goes to the left. So actually, I could have taken any function here. The graph just moves to the left. That was the heat equation. In this case, it just dies out. Uh, and uh, by the way, it is also used in other setups. This is a Martin Novak is a is a biologist or a, a mathematician who works on evolution in dynamics, and he has come up with this outer model which describes how food and uh, spreads. And so, uh, so, so this is also essentially a heat equation, wave equation we have seen. And this is from that book. I actually copied a page of that book of Jan Stewart. And then let me just show you. So this is this is a kind of when you when you run it with mathematics, and this was actually mathematics, I was computing that mathematics, I still did routines to do that also in two dimensions. And that's pretty cool if you are in a, in a pool, right? And you have this space moving around. So that's the that's the way the equation in two dimensions. Which is a FTT. It's FX6. Plus F Y Y. Very beautiful. And the Laplace equation we have seen. This is the climate. This is maybe now now with more uh, kind of steel, so better better uh, uh, maybe larger plate. And uh, so you see this. These are the these are the these are the uh, traces of that function which satisfies this uh, this partial differential equation. <coughs> Very beautiful. And it's actually still on heavy investigation, all this. This is not absolutely not especially if you take the plate is something completely different from a rectangular plate. So there are lots of open questions here. I actually worked on this in the context of, 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 of graphs. So these are the Clubby figures in the in a graph. Uh, it's very nice to, to experiment with this. Then we have seen the Burgess equation. Of course, this, this is the surface equation because what happens now, you have this wave form, and what happens is on the top the wave is, is moving faster because that's the speed of the transport equation, is that C is bigger on the top because the amplitude is bigger, so it is relating the amplitude uh, with the speed. And what happens is that this wave eventually becomes steeper and steeper and steeper, and eventually will uh, produce a place where the steepness is infinite, which is a when the, state, when the, when the wave then eventually will fall over. So that movie doesn't show what happens, what happens to this guy, but you can imagine. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's 
probably uh, uh, quite violent. So, by the way, the Schrodinger equation is, is the central equation in quantum mechanics. It looks a little bit like the heat equation, but we have an I here, which produces a different motion. Now, here's Stokes. That's an equation where you can even solve, when you can show that it has solutions, 61 million dollars, and here's a scene from the, from the movie Gifted, where this Navier Stokes equation comes up. These are the seven millennium problems. That's an interview. It's a golden pound. You could acquire the high conjecture. The only one of the seven proved. Anyway, the Navier Stokes, that's unsolved. And I should mention Sofia Kowalewski, who has proven a, a general theorem about PPE's existing theorem, and, uh, and so on. So there are many, many, many equations, also in finance, and it's very exciting topic.